Hello everyone, how's it going? My name's Adam Repos Box, and my computer's doing a bunch of rendering stuff for the work I've been doing for Tetra Ninja, so I'm recording this video in my usual technology video setup, which actually works out, because then you get some silky, smooth, hopefully 60 FPS video to go with the 60 FPS gameplay you're most likely seeing. Technology. Anyway, um, I've been working my butt off the entire week covering E3 for Tetra Ninja. I put up a quick face cam video of that uh, a couple days ago, and just wanted to let you all know about my coverage, and that's still going on, or it's not still going on, but the coverage is still going up, and I have a really great E3 kind of like best of recap-ish video that, or website post that's going up on tetraninja.com, link to the post will be in the description below. In that is a discussion video I did with BBK Dragoon about the future of Xbox and the future of gaming as per Microsoft's show, and I'm going to talk about that in an entirely separate video of my own as well. But E3 has left me with a lot of impressions and a lot of things to talk about regarding some of the gaming stuff. And I'm going to separate that into a couple different videos. Now, of course, I am a little bit late because I was spending all freaking day working on E3 stuff that I didn't have time to actually make videos about it. And But I'm doing that this weekend. So first, I wanted to talk about my Call of Duty impressions because everyone wants to talk about how it's RIP COD, R-I-P, C-O-D. Call of Duty is dead because... A bunch of people disliked a trailer. I continued to argue against that as a trailer represents nothing. Dislikes and likes on a YouTube trailer means nothing in terms of what the actual sales will be. And I think the E3 demo that was shown actually does a really good job of showing this because I swear to everything under the sun, no one knew that Call of Duty Infinite Warfare was being shown until like at least halfway through, if not most of the way through, once it was blindingly obvious that it was Call of Duty. So during the Sony show, I believe, yeah, during the Sony show, they actually showed off campaign footage of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. But they didn't tell us what it was at first. They just, you know, had a bunch of trailers back to back and then they started through the gameplay. And it was awesome. It was space combat, you had this space hub, and they were flying around in space, and you had, you know, it was like Star Wars Battlefront X-Wing flying, but it was more hyper-realistic, flying around in a spaceship, shooting other spaceships, and then they got out of the spaceship and started shooting other people and grappling hooking other people, and then eventually we picked up on that it was Call of Duty, and then that was confirmed that that was campaign gameplay from Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. They weren't prepared to show any multiplayer, but they were able to show some of the campaign, and it looked pretty damn good, in my opinion. Now, it's E3. E3 is full of lies, makeup, you know, making everything as sellable and pretty as possible to get you hyped and preferably for them to sell some pre-orders, which I definitely recommend against, but it does give us a general idea of where the game is going. And I think for me, now a lot of people are going to disagree with this, but I think for me, the fact that uh, that that you couldn't tell the difference, like that so many people didn't realize at first that it was Call of Duty is a really good thing. Call of Duty for a long time has needed a very strong fresh paint, a fresh coat of paint, a fresh look, a fresh take, and w the, the fan base always fights against that initially, but then that turns out to be what they actually wanted in the long run, and that creates this weird cycle of, we don't really want that, oh this game was the greatest, why didn't it do so well, oh we don't really want that, you know, back and forth, and it's really freaking obnoxious. Well, that is essentially what happened here, is everyone overreacted like crazy to the, to the, uh, to the trailer, to the trailer. They were just like, oh, this isn't the game we want, this is too spacey, this is too crazy, this is blah blah blah. But then when we were watching the gameplay, a lot of people were just like, what is that? That looks pretty good. And then when it was like Call of Duty, we were just kind of like, oh shit. Now, again. This is campaign. Multiplayer plays quite a bit differently. That, that's a whole different ballpark, but it's still something worth worth like thinking about. And a lot of people are going to be a lot more interested in Call of Duty when it's something new. Now, ever again, everyone keeps saying Rip COD and that Battlefield 1 is a COD killer. COD killer was a phrase coined, at least as far as most of us will know, way back in the early YouTube days, 2008, 2009, 2010, those days when Battlefield 3 was being announced, Blacklight Tango Down, everyone, uh, Halo 4, everyone was saying, or Halo Reach, everyone was saying these games were COD killers, when they weren't, like, we, we thought they might be, we thought they might be games, and many of them, like Blacklight Tango Down, I fucking loved that game, that game was absolutely fantastic, but it lost support very quickly, and a lot of people 
it didn't have a great progression system, and so a lot of people, myself kind of included, got bored of it, and it went away. People said Titanfall would be a COD killer. It should have been, but it didn't have enough variety and longevity to it to survive. So, Titanfall 2 is around. So, it's not like Battlefield's ever overtaking Call of Duty, or any franchise has, but it's certainly not a new concept. And neither is the space combat. Like, we've had a progression over the past, like, four or five Call of Duties. This is a significant amount of games where we've been progressing to futuristic and spacey kind of stuff. And they finally took the plunge and just went all in in space because Advanced Warfare, uh, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 2, a lot of that was in the exact same, like, environment. And it was getting dull. Now, a lot of people wanted to go back and play, like, an older thing, like Battlefield went to World War One. A lot of people wanted to see more of that. But, I, I, I don't know, they, they could have done that, and I st it's still possible that Treyarch may do that, or either they may go back and remaster Black Ops 1. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but they, they could either have gone so far into the future, or so far into the past, and they chose the future. And that's a decision that they chose, and I think it will be, end up being a decent game. I, I, I really do. And I, it, it may turn off some of the people, but the game has been moving away from boots on the ground for some time. At least for, you know, certain games. Advanced Warfare, and even and Black Ops 3 was a game that really got back to the boots on the ground and doing it well kind of gameplay. But that's the thing, is we get a new Call of Duty every year. There's no reason, well, first of all, there's no reason for you to switch Call of Duties every single year. That's just a stupid anti-consumer-like practice. And I think Activision knows that, and they're not expecting you to, per se. Like, there's a reason we have now three different studios working on Call of Duty games to provide us one each year. If you don't like something about one concept of Call of Duty, still play the other one. Hell, there's still people who still play the Xbox 360 Call of Duty. It's like, not a big deal. Or PlayStation 3, although not so much for the older ones. But like, the different games and the different cycles will have different feels to them, and if we don't vary them more and more, there will be less and less reason to buy the different Call of Duties. I think this is a really good move, and I think it's going to make some people mad in the short run, but if you don't want Infinite Warfare, play Black Ops 3, and then see what comes out next year. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. We're only into DLC 2 out of multiple DLCs that are coming for Black Ops 3. Now, I got bored of it, but if this is what you really want, don't get bored of it. Or play the other shooters. There's so many shooter options. There's Battlefield, Quake is coming out, there's Doom, Halo, Insurgency, Counter-Strike Go, TF2, freaking Overwatch. I am playing the shit out of Overwatch at the moment. So many shooters to play. Don't stick yourself with just one, and if you don't like the new one, keep playing the old one until the next one comes out. And plus, people love space combat. Flying around in the spaceship is freaking awesome, and shooting people from a spaceship is freaking awesome, that's why people were so disappointed that that functionality wasn't in Star Wars Battlefront, and why people were so hyped for the Star Wars VR game that was teased, and it's just a generally cool concept, so it will be cool. But we also, again, we don't know anything about the multiplayer. The multiplayer could just be arena, boots on the ground, multiplayer on like spaceships and stuff, and keep it totally mundane, and just have the campaign be crazy, because the campaign usually does a lot of weird stuff, that the multiplayer doesn't. So, I think people are overreacting. I think this is showing that it's a really good step forward for Call of Duty. And this is why I think Infinite Warfare, or why I'm kind of impressed by what was shown of Infinite Warfare. Again, I don't recommend pre-ordering. I don't recommend buying any sort of season pass until you know what you're getting from it. But, I would like to see you stop seeing such a strong backlash against it. And again, like, I don't know. Obviously, Activision wants more money from Call of Duty, as would any game studio. So, they can either which they still might do, but generally speaking, like, they can either sell more copies by doing new crazy things with the game, or they can keep putting out the same games and keep shoving microtransactions in. Pick your battles. This has been why I think Infinite Warfare might actually be better than people are thinking, and why it impressed me at E3. My name's been Adam Repos Vox. thank you so much for watching, be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome gaming videos, I'm used to saying tech here, that's a little strange, and otherwise, I will catch you in the next one. I've got a couple more of these videos I want to do, and like I said, check out TetraNinja.com for my E3 coverage, and I also do a weekly Tech Tuesday column over there as well, which I may turn into a video series here, as I'm quite enjoying this new setup. My name's been Adam, Repos Vox. I already said that. I've also been posting some old school RuneScape videos. Going way too hard in that game. Check those out if you're interested. Little goofy little grindy RPG. Got some good stuff coming in that now that I'm past the noob phase. And 
I'll catch you later.